Hello. It's like we're driving, except we're not. We're at a, another person's house. My mother's house. My other mother's house. I'm in my mother's other's house basement. <laughs> so, and we've got a video request. <clears throat> and, of course, he uh, <clears throat> wishes to remain anonymous and will respect that. Oh, let me get this up here. Hello. From time to time, I watch your YouTube because I see a coherency in the ideas you express. Anyways, my situation. 19-year-old... No, 19, yeah, 19 year old junior college student, computer science software engineering major. Could you please predict or at least give an accurate picture about the status of jobs going into the future? Uh, in, my, it, in my understanding, jobs are becoming industry related, meaning there's less maneuverability between industries while skill sets become highly spec uh, specified. And yeah, you are correct. Um, and the reason why is that's just how technology goes. Uh, as technology advances, we have to, you know, like for example, Heck, a hundred years ago, there was no such thing as nuclear engineered or power, uh, but then a whole new field of nuclear power shows up. Now, thankfully, the population increases with that, but you're, you're exactly right. As more and more things and technologies are invented and discovered, it becomes more specialized. Now, you're a computer science software engineering major, <clears throat> and uh, in general, it's a good program or degree to be in. Uh, software engineering, I'm presuming software programming or computer programming, that is also a very good field to be in. However, if you want to know for sure, there's, there's a difficult way to do it and, and a, a simpler way to do it. Always look at starting salaries. Not the starting salaries that your school gives you. Look up general starting salaries from the National Association of Colleges and, and Educators, NA, NACE. Look that up. You can also go to the Bureau of Labor Stati Statistics, BLS.gov, and they come out with what I believe is a quarterly but certainly at least annual, report about what they think or predict are going to be the industries or the jobs most in demand. So in general, no, I haven't done any research. I do know, however, yes, in general, computer programs do rather well. You have to worry about the East Indians and a lot of that being outsourced, um, but the, it becomes a quality issue. I know that this is not to slam on the East Indians, but a lot of employers and people are concerned about the quality of the programming. So double check and make sure, because there are those handful of occasional like computer science, STEM, engineering type fields that are actually horrible pain. All right, so uh, just just to keep that in mind. Uh, uh, two examples to demonstrate my concept in both instances: industry relation and skill specific. Specific. Why do you foreigners gotta trump me on my English skills? Y'all gotta write better and speak better English than I do. <laughs> he's a foreign guy. At least I'm assuming with his name. I, I can't mention his name, but he's. One up in the old captain here. Uh, carpenters and electricians cannot intermingle. You cannot, without your knowledge of carpentry, switch over to electri uh, electricianship. Uh, correct. The software field is divided. Everyone is to work in teams with a specified, with a specified from uh, specificity or specialization. I think is what I meant to say. From what I've seen, pre-designated role. <laughs> there seems to be a sort of push to have everyone in a box. A sort of divide and conquer mentality from management's point of view. Yeah, you are well <clears throat> education because they they the problem with education is they can't all specifically educate or in, individually educate you. So they have to teach you general theory so they can get as much money per teacher as possible. This is why at Wiley Hall at the U of M there was like 900 students in the Psychology 101 um, class. But as you specialize more and more, yeah, the teacher to student ratio increases or student to teacher ratio decreases. Um, as to whether management employers want you in a box, not so much because that's the whole idea of having a job. Employers are in the real world. They're going to need, they may require like general graduation and progression uh, credentialism, like degrees and certifications and all that. And especially in the computer networking field and computer field, they do require all these specific certifications like CCNA and a plus and <clears throat> Microsoft certified and the like, um, but it really is going to boil down to computer programming, and I'm not terribly familiar with that industry. Um, but you do want to jump through the hoops that everyone requires you to. Ergo, you're going to be in the box, but then you also will have to like learn specific skills that employers want, and that will differentiate you uh, from the rest of the crew. My question: This relates to the first question about the nature of jobs changing. Rather than asking which is better, comp sci or software engineering, because of some universe, because in some universities, sub software engineering is a subdiscipline of computer science, usually in the form of a minor. However, I'm noticing an increasing amount of software engineering majors that are being offered. 
usually there's a greater emphasis on programming language and object design instead of hardcore physics classes like computer science. An example of this would be UC Irvine, where software engineering and computer science are two separate majors. All right, well, if you're already noticing that, yeah, that's the market telling you something. If the software engineering people are getting jobs and the computer science and uh, uh, people aren't, yeah, physics, who, who really, when do you use hardcore physics? Unless you're in design of, like, atomic structures, you're dealing with that, or you're sp building space shuttles. In computer, uh, the computer industry, unless you're actually designing computers and microchips and you have to understand at the atomic level how uh, electricity is transferred, if that's not your cup of tea, um, yeah, I'd look at the software engineering. What are specific benefits of each degree in regarding employability? When you look at these two disciplines as separate degrees, not just right out of a four-year, but long-term, let's say into my late 20s to mid-30s. That's impossible for anyone to predict. And I'm not trying to take the cheap way out because that's 10 years down the road. Heck, mid-30s, that could be 15 years down the road. I'm estimating you're 21, 22. Um, I would talk to people in the field, but even they may not, because you know how technology is. I mean, it can it can turn over tomorrow. Someone comes up with a new, I don't know, thing or whatever. Um, Napster hits, and all of a sudden it isn't CDs anymore. So you're... You're going to hit, hit the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's what I recommend. Also talk to people in the private sector. Find out or call up companies. Say, hey, what are you, you, know, what's, what are you guys looking for in terms of uh, employability skills? Uh, but it does sound like that software engineering is a bit more practical and there's going to be a lot more jobs out there. Um, I don't know how many people you need to design computers, at the, you know, understanding physics and all that. But boy, a lot of people love their apps. A lot of people love their computer software. A lot of people love their corporate software. Uh, my interest is entirely in, in so, my interest is entirely software development. Well, there you go. There's a lot of latitude and diversity in terms of the leeway you give an approach to solve a problem and the ingenuity seen in another's code. Although now you see a little why majoring in technical in a technological discipline, there's more. Remember when I talked about maneuverability between industries? Here's an example. A good friend of mine just got into UCLA. His major is financial actuarial and mathematics. That's very good. <clears throat> see, this is what I mean. In the first year, 2015, that this major is offered for a specific career. Yeah, well, it's good to see the schools are starting to wise up to that. By, you know, training their kids or their students to like get employed. And obviously he wants to be an actuary and I have confidence in his ability because it's been demonstrated. To be honest, an actuary is a career I've looked at because of the job security over time. Is insurance another bubble? No, not really, uh, that, that's always gonna be there. And to my point about maneuverability, the beauty of a computer science degree is its applicability. A clever person such as myself is taking or rather completing the required courses to sit for the actuary exam. <laughs> you can minor in actuarial science. Finance economics statistics, I believe. A computer science degree completes maths that are required. And in fact, I've heard that it's one of the degrees that is not only accepted, but looked for in prospective recruit. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. There's a, there's a huge look at econometrics because I know it, on the face of it, it may not seem there's a lot of overlap between computer programming, computer science, and then actuarial science. But actually, yeah, there is because these insurance companies program models that predict risk. And who does the programming? Oh, computer science, man, computer programming majors. So yeah, there is there is a significant overlap. My friend has locked himself in, in a given field. In my opinion, my generation needs to have a diverse set of skills because it's hard to strike oil because there's so many people you can not be one person in a field for 20, 30 years because job security is not guaranteed. So to accommodate myself and anticipate the future, I try. I have chosen a computer degree because of the stimulation of coding and the relativity of the skill set to other fields of insurance and being an actuary as well. So to summarize, could you please predict or at least give an accurate picture about the status of jobs going into the future? There seems to be sort of a push to have everyone in a box to sort of divide and conquer a different point of view. What are the specific benefits of each degree regarding employability? Uh, I'm just kind of skipping over here. Taking my friend, one has got an example of combat, or perhaps avoid the one pump head syndrome as line of work. Riding horses is a form of transportation for the head cheaper. Horses look forward to response. To that. Here's the deal. Uh, you're overthinking it a little bit, but, but not by much. And that's a very wise observation, a very good strategy where you're also maybe getting that minor in the actuarial science and, and diversifying your skill set. The <clears throat> truth is though, you're, the field, you're, you're choosing, how can I put it? 
it's like you're going to the finest restaurant and you're saying, should I get the lobster, the steak, or the, um, what's another high end, or the um, caviar? All three of them are great options. I don't think you're going to fail with any of them. And given your diversification strategy anyway, you're only ensuring that you're going to have a good meal, aka a good career. This is not like you're looking to major in philosophy or English or some other fucking stupid waste of time degree. Um, you really are, uh, you're, you're, you're one of the more intelligent people I've certainly read is based on what you find. That's the other thing. You find this stuff interesting. So ultimately what I would say, you really seem to like coding, dude. You really seem to like, and what's great with a passion is anyone, well, I should say anyone, a lot of people can program code. It can be outsourced, but you seem to have such a penchant for it. You seem like one of those dudes who could like program the next angry birds over the course of an evening. Um, so I would not worry so much about employability. They're all relatively employable. Some of the most, the highest end employ, uh, employable uh, fields. If you're really that concerned, go look up the Bureau of Labor Statistics, look at starting salaries. One might be slightly more employable than the other I'm predicting, but there's gonna be a, a huge difference. So what that basically boils down to is what, uh, is what you like to do as the next determining factor. And, and that's the software engineering it looks like. So, uh, oh, hang on, hang on. For you. Oh, here's the decide. Here's the decide. Why is English such a damn class? The, the classes English 1B honors don't judge a community college having an honors program or my participation because it makes my transcripts look pretty and there are privileges for transfer. What I learned, or rather, what was taught was not so much critical thinking, it was baseless conjecture and outright lying. Yeah, then what, what do you think? What are you going to get from an English majors? They're, English is the laziest degree for people who speak English. My teacher was a feminist, feminist and a flirt. Ooh. And she would wag her hips in front of my nose. And older than you. Oof. Oof. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the aside. <laughs> a junior college feminist English teacher older than me wagging her hips. Ow! Oh, the nightmare. Yeah, so, yeah, I hate for once to say it, you're one of the people that actually can follow your heart and the money will follow. So that's my two bits of advice. Anyway, hope we put you on the right uh, direction there. And uh, if uh, the rest of you have a question or you want yourself a video and you're willing to pay for it, hey, you can send in a requested video. Go ahead, email it. Go to assholeconsulting.com. Don't go to my blog because I like to keep all the emails in one thing so I know I've got like three different places. I got, did I fill up this guy? Did I redo that request? Go to assholeconsulting.com, fill out the form there, and that just makes it a little bit easier on my end. Toodles.